What do you reckon? Is this made by AI or a human? Well, what about this one? Or even this one? It's not just everyday people struggling to tell the difference. Sometimes it's the professionals as well. An artist entered a photo competition with an image generated by artificial intelligence and won. A photographer calling himself a cheeky monkey has started a huge debate about the future of photography. I realize it's very important to come up with a position on AI and arts, AI and photography. Is it the same? Is it different? How do we continue? This is the artist himself, Boris Elgidson. He won and then refused the title of Sony Photography Award winner in the creative category for this image titled The Electrician. In the last months and weeks, I became an activist and the refusal of the Sony Awards is part of it. When I entered the competition, I was doing a test. Yeah? It's, it's like, a, like a hacker attitude where you say, okay, I see how the system responds, not to exploit it, but to show the weak spots. And it sparked off a debate uh, on those topics. And I'm very happy that um, people are talking now, people are debating. But let's go back a step. How do you create something like this? You just describe it in words. It's amazing. The programs used to create AI art gather data from the open web. So they're trained on images and material owned and created by other artists. Then the AI responds to the prompts we type in based on what it's learnt. So I could type in a car made out of ice cream and we get this. Look, it's pretty cool, but it does raise some big questions that can be tricky to answer. A lot of these questions are around ethics and the way these artworks are created. I think it's very important to differ between images generated with AI and photography. It looks the same, but it's a different way of producing it. Therefore, I would differ. Photography is not a different form of painting, but you could have a painting and photography that looks the same as well. And it's produced differently. And AI has learned the language of photography and of painting, drawing and so on. Boris actually uses different terminology for this kind of AI art. He calls it promptography. I think as a terminology, it's important to acknowledge it's not the same. And the second step is um, to discuss um, where to put it, where to place it, where to exhibit it. At the moment, artwork is being used to train AI systems without artists' permission, and they're getting no money or recognition for it. Now, that's just one problem. Another is if the AI is trained on people's artwork, but the art is created by a computer that is prompted by another person's words, who owns the finished product? It's still unclear. The law was not prepared for AI. There are many uh, law cases running. But I believe that having a complex workflow like I do, I decide how the image is going to look like, how it's going to be changed. I work across different platforms. I mix many options. And I think in the future, if there's a workflow where you have clearly the lead and you'd make the decisions, you will have um, the copywriter. There's also the idea that AI art could be misused. One part that is very important in talking about AI-generated images is the potential of disinformation, that uh, it can be used to create funny images, but it can also be, be used to create uh, false images and pretend that they are wrong. And um, it's uh, dangerous for uh, democratic societies because we need to have an idea of what has really happened. It also has people wondering, what does it mean for the future of photography or art as a whole? What it means for the future of the industry, we'll see. But in the end, it's a big technical revolution. And like in the past, it's creating new jobs and it's de destroying old jobs and professions. And um, it's sad, but as an artist, it gives me freedom from restrictions. 
and I always worked from from ideas, from visions. And now I can do this in a way I would have never thought it is possible.